Welcome to the next module in the classroom management course. In this module, we deal with a very important topic that is student misbehavior. Before discussing how to handle misbehavior, let us first discuss how we can prevent misbehavior in the class. Are there any ways a teacher can really prevent misbehavior in a class? There are a few techniques for this. The first one being that allow your children to respond in the class. Give maximum opportunities to students to express themselves in the class. Do not have one-way classes. Give maximum chances to the children to speak in the class, to do something in the class so that every child finds a place in the class, so that every child finds his role in the class. He feels wanted and noticed in the class. This will assure that misbehavior is averted in the class to a great, great degree. Another important thing we always need to remember that any kind of good behavior on part of the students should be appreciated on time and it should not be neglected. At the same time, we should have some uh, notice, we should take some notice of bad behavior or wrong behavior on the part of the students. So, all in all, the teacher should have a motivation system. She should have some regular system in the class to take notice of good behavior and to reprimand or to take notice of the wrong behavior of the students in the class. If there is a system and if the students are engaged well in the class activities, it will assure that maximum amount of misbehavior on part of the students is averted. As a teacher, we need to understand what is the motive behind a misbehaved child? Why does a child want to misbehave? There are two major motives that psychological experts lay down behind the misbehavior of any child. The first one is attention seeking. A child needs attention and the requirement for attention differs from child to child. There might be some students in the class who do not want your attention. There might be some who want very little of your attention. But there might be some students in your child, in your class, who require a lot deal of your attention. They might expect that you talk to them again and again. Do you spare some time as a teacher to talk to these children at least once a week? Do you frequently go up to them or call them to you and discuss certain things with them? Do you discuss with them about their learning performances, about the school atmosphere? If you do this, their necessity for attention will be satisfied and it will definitely reduce the misbehavior in your class. The second motive a child might have behind his misbehavior is power seeking. A child wants to have power, he wants to lead, he wants to be in control of the situation. He wants to be the decision maker in a certain situation. So give the child simple small opportunities to lead in his own way. Make him a monitor of something in the class. Make him the leader of a small group of students in the class. Allow him to lead some simple activity in the class. Give him chance to present something in the class. All these things may definitely satisfy his leadership motive, power motive and they may reduce his misbehavior. As much as we may try, we cannot completely avoid misbehavior of students in school. So whatever you do, they are children and they ought to misbehave. When misbehavior occurs in your class, what do you do as a teacher? The first thing you, sh you need to remember is that do not confront every situation of misbehavior. Let go sometimes. Sometimes forget and forgive the child. Do not be an extremely scolding, nagging, irritating teacher to the children. Do not catch hold of the child every time he misbehaves and scold him after every few minutes in school. So pick your battles. This is very important. Do you think that you really need to intervene in the situation? Is this serious enough to scold the child? Is this really important enough? Only then try to manage misbehavior. Otherwise, misbehavior is a naturally occurring thing to the children and as teachers, we need to forget and forgive a big part of it. Now, suppose you have decided to confront the child after misbehavior, then what do you do? 
take the child aside. Do not confront him in front of his classmates. It may be deeply insulting for him. He may not talk openly to you in front of the class. So talk to him privately. Call him to your place and ask him about the incident. And do not talk too much. Do not say too many things to the child. The fewer the words, the better. Allow that child to speak and listen very, very attentively. Also, we must remember that do not talk to the child immediately after he has misbehaved. Give him some short cool down period. Maybe the child himself realizes that he is wrong and you never need to say anything. Maybe the child himself accepts his mistake. He feels guilty about it. So do not go on firing the child after he has misbehaved. Let him realize his mistake. Give him the opportunity to think over what has happened by his own selves. Do allow a short cool down period. When you are talking to the child about his misbehavior, have complete attention towards him. Block out all the external stimuli. When you are talking to the student, focus yourself completely at him. Do not take any phone calls. Do not talk to anybody else in between. Do not receive any messages in between. The child should feel that you are listening to him with total focus and attention and you are really concerned about what has happened with him. Also, allow the child to speak out his mind. Ask simple questions but do not speak too much from your side. You should have, as a teacher, a level of maturity to differentiate between the emotional messages that the child is giving and the facts that he is sharing with you. What is he trying to tell you? Is it the reality or is it his perception of reality? Is it a feeling in his mind or is it a fact that he is telling? You should be able to differentiate between the two. So learn that as a teacher and develop the skill to differentiate between intellectual messages and emotional messages. Have a caring approach. Let the child know that you are really concerned about him. Let the child know that you really want to solve his problem. Have a nice eye contact with the child. Do not avoid eye contact. The child should feel that you are listening very keenly and you are absorbing every word he says so that he is put on an alert mode. He has to think carefully before speaking to you. As a teacher, we must remember that however serious the situation is, we need to provide a way out for the child. We do not need to trap the child into a situation. We do not want to target him for his misbehavior, but we want to get him out of it. So always leave a dignified way out of the situation for the child. If a person is talking in your class, what would you do? Ask him if he wants to drink water. Tell him to go out and wash his face. Say that, oh, probably you're not attentive today. Do you want to take a break? Go out for two minutes and rejoin the class again. This will help you handle the matter gracefully. It will increase the respect for you in the minds of the students and you will not confront the child for his misbehavior. Always the child should be able to get out of the situation respectfully. This is extremely important. When you come to a certain conclusion that the child has misbehaved, when it is decided that the child is at fault in the situation, then let him phrase it in his own words. Ask questions to the child which are pointed and conclusive. Ask him, are you aware of what you have done? Do you feel that you were right or do you feel that you were wrong here? Are you aware of the consequences of your behavior? Do you remember the rules of the school? What does the rule of the school regarding this state? Let the child utter that he has misbehaved. Let him say by himself that he is guilty. Let him say by himself that he has not followed the school rule in this regard. This will make him feel responsible for his misbehavior. You do not hurry to label him, but let the acceptance of the fault come on part of the child. You just need to drive him towards it. Your role should not be labeling the child as wrong, but your role should be leading him to understand that he is wrong. This will help him improve his behavior in future. As we handle student misbehavior, we need to remember some things which we should not do as teachers. 
Number one, we should never look down upon the children physically. You should never go stand to a child who is sitting down and look down at him. This is extremely insulting. Make the child stand up. Have an equal eye level communication with the child. That will make him feel more responsible for his behavior. The second thing is that we should not ridicule a child in front of his classmates. It will leave a permanent bad impression on his mind and you will create a very bad picture of yourselves as a teacher. So do not shame the child. Do not ridicule or make people laugh at him in a group. As far as possible, handle the situation individually. Talk to the child one to one. The third thing we need to remember is have a non-threatening body posture. We have seen many teachers who say that I will teach a good lesson to you. I will see to it that you do not repeat this again or be ready to face the consequences if you do this once again. Do not threaten the children. Put them into the responsible position. Put the onus of the situation upon them. Say that you will decide what to do and you will face the consequences. Do not threaten the children. Do not have a threatening body posture as well. We are not here to scare the children but we are here to make them strong and build their confidence the next thing we need to remember while scolding the children is do not disrupt your learning activity as far as possible if some students in your class misbehave do not stop the whole class for it make them go out of the class talk to them separately for a minute or two but continue the teaching in your class continue the learning activity which is going on in your class is it something really so important that you need to stop the learning in your class? Take the call, think about it and then only disrupt the learning in the class. Lastly, always remember that the children do not intend to insult you. They do not intend to hurt you specifically. Misbehavior comes naturally to them. They are young children and they ought to misbehave. They ought to commit mistakes. So take it lightly. Whatever serious incident happens in your school, forget it over time and treat the child as new. Start from square one again. Remember that misbehavior of students should not be taken personally. I've seen many teachers who get a high blood pressure disorder over a few years because they have to deal with a lot of student misbehavior. Do not take misbehavior personally. Do not take it too much to heart. Understand that such incidents will keep happening because you're dealing with young children and accept them in a positive manner. Try to direct them towards the positive upbringing of the children. Thank you.